by non-traumatic joint instability, I mean if your knees or other joints dislocate spontaneously, seemingly without reason. There's another video about possible reasons and physical abnormalities that can be a cause. But do you ever wonder if there can be another diagnosis that could explain it and cause other differences in your body? There can be genetic reasons for dislocations. In this video we'll discuss some of them, what they are, how you can know if you or your child has them. Hypermobility Spectrum Disorder There are a lot of terms for joint instability. Hypermobility means joints that move more than usual. Some people call it being bendy, having loose joints, or being double-jointed. You may have noticed if you tend to hyperextend your limbs, like instead of just straightening a limb you can take it backward a little. Or if you can do things with your hands or the rest of your body that others can't. It's been said hypermobility is a spectrum and not everyone will have a diagnosable condition in addition to that. It has been linked to digestive issues, autism, and anxiety. Some terms that may be used when talking about patella instability are unstable kneecaps, patella tracking disorder, and trick knee. Mutations in collagen genes can lead to hypermobility. Collagen is in connective tissue, which makes up tendons, ligaments, bone, among other things. So you may have several symptoms as it can affect many areas of the body. You may notice you have blue or gray sclera, meaning the whites of your eyes. Two of those diagnosable conditions are osteogenesis imperfecta and Ehlers-Danlos. Osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as OI and brittle bone disease, is characterized by short stature and osteopenia, which is low bone density. Some people may be under 3 feet tall and have hundreds of bone fractures. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, also known as EDS, is characterized by overly flexible joints, and abnormal, sometimes very stretchy skin. Sometimes the two conditions overlap and patients have the clinical symptoms of both OI and DDS. Some may be over 4 feet tall, with only a couple of fractures in their lifetime, or a couple of subluxations and never be diagnosed. Other areas you may notice problems are fragile or movable teeth, loss of hearing or vision, sprains and strains, easy bruising, and cardiovascular irregularities. Do you need a formal diagnosis? Many people have these conditions and don't know it, and live normal lives. However, it can be validating and helpful. It can help doctors take you seriously, help you know what medical problems you are prone to, and even help protect your children as talked about in the Social Worker Part 2 video. When you know your child is likely to have pain and more prone to injuries it can be good to keep that in mind and alert their school. Adults want children to not pry over little things and be tough enough to live in the world. Sometimes with that good intention we invalidate children and neglect them emotionally by telling them to stop crying and it doesn't hurt. In fact, a lot of children take pain better than adults. Many children will break a bone and act like they are fine. I read that most doctors are able to diagnose EDS, but the experience I've heard of many patients is that their primary physicians will not diagnose. They see a geneticist, or rheumatologist, and get genetic testing to rule out other disorders and certain types of EDS. It may be helpful to print the diagnostic criteria and take it to your primary care doctor because not everyone is very familiar with it. I've put a link to it in the description. It tests your hypermobility with the Baden score. Outside of this testing, these moves are not something you should be doing just because you can. If your knees hyperextend try to be aware of how you stand and correct it. Some braces can help with this. Skin, abdominal hernias, mitral valve prolapse, pain, and family history, are some of the other criteria that are taken into account. Companies like Invita do genetic testing. They may test blood or saliva. If a family member has been diagnosed you can ask for that information which will tell them exactly what to look for. They may even confirm other close family members for free. Here's a quick walkthrough explanation of the Baden score from the checklist. First part of the test is take a hand, put it on your thigh, take your pinky, you're going to pull it back as far as you can go. If you can get your pinky past perpendicular or past 90 degrees, that's basically one point. So we're going up to nine. So that's one point. Do the other hand, same pinky. You're going to take your thumb. This would be plantar flexion of the thumb. And if you're one of those crazy people that can take the thumb all the way down your forearm, that's another point. Do the other side and get another point. So you're doing really good at this point if you got all those. Now you're going to take your elbows, extend them as far as you can. If you're one of those people where you have double jointed elbows and they hyperextend, one, two. Now you're up to six points. Another two points would be stand with your knees completely extended, if your knees go beyond 90 degrees or, or 180 degrees perpendicular here, that's another point per knee. Now, 
The last one is a standing toe touch, and we're just going straight down to the floor, knees locked. If you can get your palms to the floor, technically that's another point. 